All right, everybody. So it's Rob again with another video. So uh, I remember this from the other videos, right? We got to where we drew her out. She was a class project that I decided to finish up and explain um, for those that weren't in that class uh, or, I mean, because we had to cut class short. So we did the, uh, the gesso, the clear gesso over her face with the gray and everything else. Watch one, two, and three of this video uh, series and uh, you'll get a good idea how we got to this point. But as you can see, we have a much, let's just say ghost-like image of what we started with. I had to turn down my Alexa speaker. That thing was loud as hell. So you still see the image underneath that, uh, th those washes of gray. And you can, for the most part, see all the uh, yellowy oranges and stuff that I use to splatter with are gone or more or less covered up. And then the uh, clear gesso to give it a little tooth. It's got a little tooth. Hopefully it's enough so we can get cracking on this. Even if it's not, you know, this is all practice. It's just for fun. And that's really a good mindset to have when you're going to go into something like this. It's anything, really. It's a drawing, painting, whatever you're into. You know, just chill, relax. You know, accept that it's going to look like crap because you've never done it before. And then you just practice more and practice more and practice more. Be positive. And little by little, you'll start gaining all the knowledge that you need, little by little. Okay, so... What I'm going to do now, I'm going to start reinforcing some of the areas that I want to go into. Now, I don't want to make this a huge, long, drawn-out video, the whole damn thing being drawn out. I just want to give you an idea of shading, how that is done with my HB Hard Charcoal Pencil from Generals. That's the brand that I'm using. It's my favorite. Here's my pencil extender on uh, the white charcoal that comes with it, but here's a brand new pencil. Okay, and you can see that I sharpened my pencil tips. Okay, and there's a recent video I posted that is going to be on sharpening. Uh, where you can see it's kind of like that long spear. Okay, so this is my white, my black. And it's HB hard because I don't want it to be overly dark. If you go in with a medium, a soft, or an extra soft, it's just going to be so dark. You're probably going to run into just a big mess of a problem. This is a lot easier to erase. And of course, you can always go darker. That's a lot easier than going super dark and then trying to come back the other direction and make it lighter. That's not impossible, but it's a lot more work. I call that putting band-aids. I don't want you to put band-aids, okay? I want you to work. So I'm just gonna do um, the forehead and hair section up here, and maybe it will get further along later on in the video, but what you see here pretty much, I'll cover one of the eyes. It'll be just the same idea carried throughout. Now, another thing, because I'm right-handed, I usually like to work from the top left hand and start working this way because that way my hand is going over pretty much clean paper, right? There's not going to be anything here because I'm going to draw here working my way down. If you were left-handed, you'd start on the top right working yourself down to the bottom left. That way your hand is going over nothing and therefore not smudging and making a big mess. So that's another way of staying clean. Another way of staying clean is I'll use a napkin, okay? These are just little tips. I use a napkin. I'll put my hand. I get, my hands get sweaty and all that because I am get hot sometimes. But I'll do this. And what I do, it's, it's pointless to have a napkin under your hand to protect your, your hand from getting dirty and, and protect your picture if, if your napkin's doing this. Okay, that's the same thing as your hand being on it doing that. So that's pointless. So what I do is, again, I'm right-handed. I'll put it like this. And with my left hand, I'll hold the napkin down. And then I'm able to move into it like this. And I get a lot of freedom of movement with my right hand because my left hand is holding this napkin uh, up to the paper. Okay, and I'm using an easel, so it's vertical, okay? So it's nice and uh, parallel to my sight. That way I can take this all in. I'll lean back every once in a while because I want to try to see this as a slight distance. It helps you to judge values and proportions much more accurately than, you know, doing this thing right up on it and then you back up and you're like, oh my God, what was I doing, okay? So again, in that can I hold up my left and then I do this and I'm able to move around. And you'll see me start doing that as I draw. Okay, 
So I usually like to start with my darks and work to my lights, okay? That's not a, a hard, fast rule, like, you know, it's not gonna work if you don't do it that way. You can really do whatever you like. I, I try to follow that rule along with the rule of, that, that I made up, which is to work from top left to bottom right for the reasons I just mentioned. So let's go in here again. I'm gonna grab my HB Hard, my Generals, and I'm using the Canson brand. I'm gonna make a video on how I stain this to begin with, okay? It won't be exactly this because it's all splattered, but I'll just give you an idea and that way you guys out there will be able to figure out, okay, I wanna do a different color, different technique, whatever, different look. Um, so stand by, I'm gonna be making those videos soon. So most people like eyes, that's like a go-to for some people. So let's just go into an eye because there's a lot of intricate stuff going on. So it's, it's a lot of fun. So why the heck not? Let's just go right into the eye. And you can see, notice that when I hold my pencil, when I was originally sketching her out, I was doing the ring a bell method. Like when you ring a bell, ding-a-ling-a-ling, -a like that, okay? So ringing a bell, I let it float off of my palm. It's not touching anything, it's floating. And I hold it basically with my index and middle finger and my thumb like so, okay? And I just do this. It's very, uh, it's a very free uh, movement. It's very uh, liberating, I guess you could say, okay? It's, you can move through this, you know, very freely. And the most important part is it, you can't really get a lot of pressure like that, okay? So yeah, you're sacrificing some accuracy and I know everybody complains oh this is not comfortable I don't understand I'll have to practice okay I wasn't born holding a pencil I had to practice this position this um, way of holding a pencil what I call uh, ringing a bell maybe there's another name for it I don't know is great for the beginning when you're sketching you're drawing very lightly and you know, I'll just use a corner here and then I can draw all the lines I need, and they're gonna be so light I can easily erase them okay so it's very important you do that. And then later on, as you're starting to get into the finer details, then you can grip it the way you would sign a checkbook or when you write grandma a letter or something, right? You do this, the regular grip that we all write with. That's for the finer little details, but not now. Right now we're trying to do some details, but I'm still gonna hold it back just a ways as I start going into all the lines that I previously covered up with some of that paint. And you'll start seeing how this becomes much more lively. I'm gonna have to go turn a light on because it's getting dark in here. One second. So let's talk some basic construction. I got my little reference picture up here. The upper eyelid sits on top of the bottom eyelid okay so make sure when it comes off over here that the upper eyelid is the one that goes off to the edge and then the bottom eyelid sits under and you see my lines pretty dark because you know it's charcoal even with the HP hard it's still pretty dark it's perfect, it's exactly what I need. You got this nice little curve. Now we already resolved all the drawing issues for the most part in the first part. When I first sketched it out in class with my students and when I talked about it in part one. That being said, I never stopped to think, oh, well, I'm done. It's, it's a perfect, awesome drawing. I made no mistakes. Okay, um, I'm just gonna start going in and I'm gonna trust all those lines. I never think that way because as you start drawing, you start getting tired and you start believing things that may not be true. You think it looks good. And then you look at it with a fresh mind the next day and you're like, oh man, that's too big or whatever. So in other words, I always draw thinking I need to potentially fix something, okay? So I'm gonna put my napkin out here. I'm, trying, I'm hoping that I don't block it too much from the camera. I'm not a, not a cameraman by any stretch of the imagination. And again, this is a drawing that we started in class, and I'm not really trying that hard to make it look identical to this girl. I'm really just using it as an exercise. At home, you have time, and uh, you're not filming. Oh, this nightmare, so you're not gonna have to worry about all the stuff I gotta worry about. So take your time at home. 
And we're gonna be doing videos where I'm gonna talk about a drawing, I'm gonna do a drawing from the very beginning. And I'm gonna talk about the very beginning stages. We'll be doing that um, this summer. I hope everybody's safe from this whole coronavirus thing. It's uh, kind of a blessing in disguise for me. It's given me the time to start doing, uh, start doing all these videos. And so as you can see, the eyebrows look hairy because I just left a little space in between. And in general, eyebrows have a, an angle that goes pretty much from like the center of your face, like in this angle, and it kind of goes off like that, okay? And it'd be the opposite angle on the other side, okay? They're not horizontal lines, they're not vertical lines, don't do that, it's gonna look weird, okay? Follow the, uh, the lines that you see in the hair of that person, okay? Be accurate to what you see, be true to it. So let's start going into some of this shading right here on the inside of this eye. I may go darker with my values than what I see in the photo, okay? As an artist, you're, you're creating something, okay? You're not a Xerox machine, okay? At least that's my take on it. I'm gonna create something that I feel is better or more interesting than the photograph that I see, okay? If it's a commission work and it's somebody's family member, of course, I gotta draw exactly what I see, but when I'm just practicing like this and I'm kind of, I feel a lot more freedom because I can do whatever the heck I want, then I don't, I don't let the photograph dictate every single stroke of the pencil. It is simply a guide as to, hey, go that direction. Okay, so I'm going in that direction, but whether you do cartwheels while you go in that direction or you skip or you jog or you sprint in that direction, it doesn't matter how you go, okay, the method that you're using to go, it's the point is that you're going in that direction. That's my mindset when I'm drawing uh, for myself. So hopefully that concept helps you to free up your mind and kind of helps you to just chill out a little bit. And you can see, um, again, I'm holding my pencil like I explained earlier. Just putting down some tone, a little bit of tone. Okay, again at home I want you to, you know, outline the whole thing, work into your darks and your lights. I'm just gonna concentrate on a small spot for you guys, okay? Please remember that. This is one of those do as I say, not as I do moments. Nice hard edge on this side. So I'll be able to do that. And let's look at the structure of the eye area, okay? You got this little beefy part about above the eye, right? Your eye sinks as it goes towards that wrinkle above it. Okay, and that can be dramatic sinking or not as much. Everybody's built differently. Uh, body fat, all sorts of things affect it. So there's a little bit more light up there. So I don't want to go heavy with my charcoal, just like I don't want to go heavy with my white. That way I have room to grow. Always stay a few steps away from the brightest bright or the darkest dark when you're working. That way you can always add more. So let's just get that eye more finished up because I don't know how much people like that little highlight cutting right into that pupil. That pupil sits in the center of the iris. So usually the pupil, that little black dot, is closer to the upper lid or the upper uh, eyelid where the eyelashes are and further away from the bottom, okay? And so I got this nice gray base. I want to keep that so it shows through and I got a little bit of light down there. A little bit of reflected light from the bridge of the nose, throwing light up against the eyeball. Notice I just put a little bit of white. If you go crazy into the whites of the eyes and you just become crazy white, what ends up happening is it will end up looking like somebody swallowed a light bulb after it was turned on. And their eyes look like they're glowing, which looks bizarre. Okay, nobody looks that way. So make sure you use that white sparingly. I just put a little bit, it's not blended out or anything. So now I'm gonna take my stump, as you can see, I like to segregate my two sides. Here's my black side and my white side. And the reason for that is we don't wanna make a mess. I don't wanna go with my black side into those white eyes because then it'll just muddy it up or vice versa. I use my white side into the shadows and then I'm like, oh crap. And now my shadows look gray or, or lighter than they're supposed to. So I'm gonna go into my white side and go into that small area. Notice I left a little space between the white here and the eyelid. That's because the light sources in most cases are coming from up top. The sun, 
a lamp, whatever it is, and the eyelid on top has a certain thickness to it. That thickness adds a little bit of a cast shadow and therefore usually just underneath the eyelid, all the way across the eye, it's usually a little bit darker than the rest of the eye. I didn't say black, just a hair bit darker. So what I do is I leave the gray of the paper showing, okay, there's the eyelash, and here's the white that I just added. That's the gray of the paper. I'm gonna go in there and smooth this out with my stump, okay? This is probably one of my favorite blending tools. You don't need a whole lot. And I'm gonna let that stump get dirty and blend some of that white in there, but because it's gonna be less, it looks like that shadow effect. And you can already see, look how cool this little effect is. See that? Very nice. Now, the iris is this ring, you know, this, this circle in your eye, that's what we call it. You have blue eyes or brown eyes or whatever eyes. Okay, the iris, and here's a little general uh, rule. Irises are always darker on the outside. So I like leaving a nice dark rim, okay? They don't have to be super black, but darker than the inside. So if, even if you have dark brown eyes, the outside edge is gonna be darker than the inside color of your eye, okay? So on this side, it's, I find a little bright, so I'm just gonna go straight into my black side. I know there's a little residue here, as you can see. I don't clean my stumps. I don't believe in cleaning them. I've heard of people doing that. I don't grasp that concept. I don't think it's a good idea to clean them, but that's me. I leave them dirty, and if I need to clean it because it has too much residue, I simply take my napkin and I go like this, or like that to the black side, and that's as clean as I want. I really don't want to over clean it, because I want residue. And look at that eye, isn't that beautiful? Not a lot of work either, I mean, I really, it's kind of fun, I didn't really do much. And then here's this eyelid, there's a little bit of light that it's catching, so I'm gonna stop uh, just before the inside edge of the iris because then it gets dark again. I'm just tapping the paper, applying some white, but it's not this bright, okay? So I'm judging my values. Values is, of course, for those of you, because I know there's always somebody out there that doesn't know. Values means your, your darks and lights, okay? Some little vocabulary. And now inside the iris itself, okay, where you would call it blue eyes or green eyes or whatever. I'm gonna put a few little like spokes of a wheel kind of effect like that. You don't have to do that, but people, because sometimes you can't even really see that many details on a person's eye. But if you want the oohs and ahs, people saying, oh wow, that looks really cool. You know, you do that and it kind of gives you that effect. But I don't just leave it that way. What I do, I'm just basically using it to apply some material. Then I'm gonna go out here with my stump and I'm gonna blend out like so. You see, I keep following that spoke of the wheel kind of stroke, I'm doing this, okay? And it kind of leaves little spaces in between which kind of looks like the little, the muscles that makes your pupil open up and close. Now, just above the pupil, it's a lot darker up there because of the shadow that I mentioned earlier and because of the eyelashes. And there you go, there's really quickie inside of the eye. Now the tear duct area right here tends to catch a little bit of light. It's pretty bright actually in there because that kind of starts to fold outward and start catching more light. And then I'm gonna just use this residue on this stump so it doesn't come out too bright and do the edge of that tear duct flesh area. You can probably don't see it very well on camera, but I'm gonna add a little bit more white to the paper. I just need a little line in there. And of course, that little shelf, that little pinky shelf right here that is your bottom eyelid. That shelf, that's catch up, that's the actual thickness of your, eye, of your eyelid, okay? So you gotta remember that eyelid isn't as thin as a piece of paper. It's a 16th of an inch, an eighth of an inch, whatever. It's got some thickness to it, so that's catching a little light. So you gotta be aware of how much light is it catching. It's catching more light on this side than it is um, towards the inside of the eye. So I'm going to blend this out slightly as it starts to hit the upper eyelid. It starts to get less light. And here it was less light than when I applied, but no biggie. I'll just kind of do that number. And as I stroke it a little bit more, it becomes practically gray and almost invisible. 
It does that. Look at that eye. Isn't that beautiful? Now let's go into the shadow. I applied some charcoal as you saw in the beginning. I just put a little bit of charcoal in there. Just a few strokes. Because it doesn't matter how beautiful my strokes are. Just as long as they're light. Light pressure. Because then this is my tool. It's like putting when I, when I paint in oil. I just apply it to an area. And then I use another brush. A softer brush. And then I blend it out. So I needed a yellow there. So I put some yellow with a, a brush. And then I get another soft brush. And I blend it out. Same concept. I put some charcoal where I want it. And then I blend it out. And I always put a little less than what I think, just in case, like that. I'm finding that to be a little dark. So, again, you can do that, make it darker, change the values however you want. I'm changing over to the white side, and I'm going to go into the white area. I play, apply some white, and I'm going to just bring that white down like so. And I'm going to let it blend into some of this charcoal. So yeah, it's going to get some charcoal on your white side, but that's okay. Like so. And that's going to give you some sort of middle gray, something between the charcoal and the white. And you get that effect. Now underneath the eye, there's a little shadow there. I'm going to go back to my dark side. And I'm going to, first this needs to stretch out a little bit more. Out that way. And again, with my stump, just as everything else I do, it's very, very light pressure. Nothing is done with a lot of pressure. Now she looks like she got her butt beat. She looks a little bit too dark. That's good. Those are good mistakes because I want to be able to explain, you know, how would I do that? I want to lighten this area. There's two ways. I can go in there with an eraser, like a stump. Let's do that because there's another way. When I say eraser, your mind goes instantly to doing this, okay? Don't do this because that's not what I want to do. I don't want to get rid of it all. I just want to tap See, I just kind of mush my kneaded eraser around a little bit. And again, this is my go-to eraser. I want to just tap it. And I'll show you when I'm done tapping here how I took off some material. Just like that. And already you see it gotten a little bit lighter. Another way is, it, it just depends on, you know, experience you can get it to work for you. You can put a little white in there, and then with my white side of my stump, I'm gonna gently blend that in and get that middle light gray that I see there, okay? And there you go. So now two methods that you can lighten an area. That little area could represent something else in your drawing. It doesn't necessarily have to be an eyelid or anything like that. That's just a technique that you've now just learned so you can lighten areas in other parts of your drawing. So let's go back inside the iris. I'm gonna go kinda in there and just kinda lighten this up. I'm not lighten it, but blend it up just a little tiny bit. And I, I think that's pretty good. Not, not bad for government work, as my buddy used to say. And right up in here where the roundness of that dark shadow was, right up in there, that's where it seems to be catching the most amount of light as this cheekbone area is catching the light that's coming from the top, okay? And then it starts to round out, I'll just draw it. It starts to round out like so. So these lines represent the, line, the, uh, the light. So it's catching a lot of light right around here as these poke out of your skull. Your cheekbones, the tip of your nose, their nostrils, uh, your muzzle area where, where your mustache would be, and the top of your, uh, your chin. Those are areas that stick out, and what I call the Neanderthal ridge, okay? I like using these terms because, you know, technical scientific terms, people get confused. But my stupid little terms, people tend to remember better. The Neanderthal bridge, or ridge is, you know, how the Neanderthals had that big old ridge up here. Well, everybody's got that to a certain extent it, as far as having it stick out. Some people it sticks out a lot, some people not as much. And so this ridge right up in here, I'll just draw some white just for the heck of it, just to show you. It catches more light up in here on this eyebrow ridge. Here's the tip of the nose, the wings of your nostrils right there. And then of course, the top of your muzzle right here. Okay, your little mustache area. Because that's jetting out from her face. It's coming out, so that's catching light. And then of course, the top center, and I'll just draw a little circle like that, of your chin. 
that's generally where you're going to see most of the light. And then in the center of the forehead, you'll notice that a lot of times, again, it depends on lighting and, you know, are there, are there reflectors? Is it a professional kind of setup? Are you just in some room and you took a picture of your cousin? Are you outside? You know, there's a lot of factors. But in general terms, a human skull has this little flat area just above my little Neanderthal ridge. That little flat area tends to dull out a little bit and not be as bright as the upper part going into the forehead, into the uh, hairline, and, it, and then across the Neanderthal bridge. So there's a little bridge, let's say, of slight, I don't want to call it darkness, just not as bright as this area or the area above it, okay? And so the area above it could be in much more light. I'll just put some lines just to kind of explain that. And then, of course, the bridge of the nose, okay? And everybody's nose is shaped differently. An area that uh, tends to recede into your skull and not catch as much light, um, so be wary of it, is this area right here, right in between the eyes and the eyebrows, I should say. In that area, your skull bends into your skull, okay? Your skull bends in, inward, and then right around the bridge of the nose right here, it starts to pop out to make the bridge of your nose, okay? So the bridge of the nose catches light, but you'll notice a lot of times the light stops right around the pupil line. And then above it is this duller area, not necessarily super dark, but it's duller because this area recedes into the skull. Then it pops back out of the skull to make the ridge, becomes flat, somewhat receding, which is what I just talked about this area. And then it starts to fold back and it catches more light, okay, assuming the light's from the very top. And then, of course, your chin is just this, this ball, let's say, something like that. And it's just kind of doing this thing. And so like a sphere, right, like a ball, this area here is closer to the light source, therefore it's going to be brighter. And then it's going to recede as it goes away from the light, okay? This area here is catching a lot of light, so I'm going to put some white there just to show you guys. Okay, I'm kind of messing up my drawing just to make a point here, so I hope you guys appreciate this. So right in that area. Real quick about lips. You'll notice that the lips right across or right on the edge of your filtrum, that little dip above your upper lip there, there's a ridge of light that follows the very edge of your upper lip, okay? There's a little light edge that follows it on the light side. Now, on hers, there's shadow on this side, so I'm not going to use this. But you can see this. It's much brighter, and then it recedes into this other type of light, okay? As in, it's not as bright. Okay, and that's because your lips, a lot of times, if you were to see her in profile, you know, sideways, you'll see the lip, you'll see the nose. You know what? Let's draw it. Let's just draw it. Let's draw it on the back of this, uh, let's draw it on the back of this paper because I really don't want to ruin this one. So here's somebody's nose, and it's doing this thing. Okay, I'm just going to invent the nose. Somebody in profile. So here is your filtrum. That's that little dip, right? The lip... If you look real close, it has a little bit of a curve like that, okay? And so that little curve is sticking out. So your lip does this, and it kind of curves out just a little tiny bit. For some people, it's more than others. And so that little curve catches right there a little bit more light. And that's why we get that little, um, that little glow, that little light around our mouth. So just be careful with it. Don't go insane trying to make that work for you, okay? And so, of course, there's the mouth. And I'll go into breaking down the face and how light works on the face in other videos. And so, since the light is coming from up top, it hits the lip. And your lip, right around this up the bottom lip, right around where you see this circle here, that's where it's going to catch most light for the most part. Okay? Your upper lip, notice how it's receding or going into the skull. Okay? Your little mouth here, your upper lip is almost always, 90 some odd percent of the time, is gonna be in shadow. Not super dark, but it's gonna be in shadow and much darker usually than the bottom lip, which is popping out of your face. Your bottom lip is always coming out of your skull. Your upper lip is always going into your skull. Okay, so it's gonna be darker on the upper lip, lighter on the bottom lip. Okay, we'll break down facial features in the future so you can have a better understanding on how all these bone structures work and don't worry I'm not, a, I'm not the smartest uh, dude in the world I'm not a doctor I don't know all these medical terms for all these bones so when I explain it 
is going to be for the regular beer drinking kind of dude that just wants to understand this in a, in a simple way. And so I'm just going to go back into this eye area. And I'm going to just apply a little bit of white. Notice my stroke. I'm still ringing a bell. It keeps my pressure really, really soft. There's a little bit of a, of a shadow right on the inside of the nose here. So I'm going to keep the white away from it because it's already gray. I don't need to make it gray. It's already gray. I'm just going to stay away from it. And I'm just going to add, these are hash marks when I go in one direction. And when you go on, to on top of it in the other direction, it's called cross hatching. Okay. So hatch marks and then cross hatching. So if you want to just darken an area or in this case, lighten an area, you just go over it in the other direction like so. And you just, you can do that. Now this is already gray, so I'm going to see if maybe I can just use the gray of the paper. We'll see how it works out. So let's try to start blending this. Notice my pressure is very, very soft. Let's go to another blending tool that I like to use because I want to show you the different tools that are available to you and different things you can do. So here's uh, my uh, number two filbert, and this was in the supply, uh, the supply kit video. So you check it out and you can see what it is, the Artist Loft brand, number two, uh, Filbert or flat, whatever you want. And here's a number two round, okay? And again, you don't have to use these. I just like to use different tools so you students can see the different things. These are, this is a little bit gentler than the stump. Sometimes it's, it's not, it's too gentle and it's not really doing what I want it to do as it's like, as in right now. And so then I'll just drop that, go back to my stump. On these prepared papers, the stump tends to be my go-to blending tool. It just tends to work better. And then just notice how I'm doing these little circular sort of motions, okay? I'm, I'm gonna exaggerate, okay? I'm gonna go like this real big. I'm doing these circular motions. The reason is it will fill in all those little gaps much more efficiently. A lot of you are doing this, okay, or this, and it's just, that's too, too rough, and you'll just leave more marks on your paper. This is a much gentler movement when you do it this way. Nice, gentle blend like that. And so I'm trying to keep my values where I'm not hitting it as dark or as light as I want. I want to stay away from what I believe it, it actually is. So if I believe it's, it's a certain amount of white, a certain amount of brightness, I'm going to make, keep it a little darker than that. If I believe it's a lot darker than what I'm doing, I'm going to keep it lighter because I can always make it lighter or darker. Yeah, that's a much safer way of working than saying, well, I'm just so darn good at this that I know for a fact it's that black or that white or whatever. And then you go draw and you draw and you draw and you find out in an hour or whatever, wow, you were wrong again. And you guessed it wrong. Now you're playing Band-Aid. Now you're Band-Aiding. In other words, you're fixing trying to erase and you're trying to do this and then you cause more damage and it and then that isn't the kind of work I want you to do that's not fun I don't know anybody that likes having to fix work I'd rather you work work go in there and do it and do it with a, a knowledge base where you understand what you're doing and yeah you're gonna make some mistakes of course nobody's perfect but it's very different to make a few minor mistakes are easily fixed than to be making a thousand mistakes and you're constantly going back and forth fixing things okay that's just a, that's an annoying thing and so i'm gonna use some of this white that i applied earlier when i was explaining different uh, areas of the face that get light and all that and you can shade in two different ways in this case i've put a gray base i can use the gray that's there as a middle tone okay and so i'll just add some highlights and a little bit of light and some darks and middle darks, okay? And then leave the paper showing, okay? That may not be possible because you can still see some of the paint that I splattered for the effects. And so to be able to cover over them, I may have to go into this uh, and do it where I don't leave the gray of the paper showing much and I make the grays that I want, okay? That looks like I'm gonna have to because of the predicament I'm in with the splattered paint and all that, but that's good. I mean, when you know different ways of working, it lets you, uh, lets you be free and do whatever the heck you want. So I'm gonna apply some material in there. I'm gonna apply a little bit of material. I'm holding very, very light pressure. 
And I'm looking at the shape of that shadow on the nose. Really shouldn't jump over the chin like I did over here and start shading everywhere, but I was just kind of playing around with it. And so over here, I'm gonna add just a little bit of charcoal along the hairline and forehead. Pick up my stump. That looks to be a little bit too bright over there, so I'm gonna just take a little bit of the white off of my eraser, okay? Again, that's from me explaining. And you look at the picture and you say, where, where is she brighter? And that, that's gonna define her skull features and how she is shaped. And so I see it a little bit brighter in here. And then it diffuses slightly in there and there. And then I'm gonna put a little bit more brightness up in there. Here's another brush, all right? Another, uh, this is Robert, uh, oh, American Painter, okay? Doesn't matter, it's a soft brush. You can see, I'll just put it up on her cheek over here. It's a relatively soft brush. Remember, you don't want it to be too soft, and you sure don't want some old, beat up, stiff brush, because it'll just scrape everything off. Something in the middle, okay? And it don't have to be expensive. Usually the cheaper ones work just fine. There's a nice big brush, and it's doing a better job than the other ones at blending, at least on this material. The other one works great on my other paper that I like to use, which is again the same brand as this paper. It's Canchin, but it's their their uh, their char the, uh, their pastel paper. Their Mi Tientes line, M I dash T I E N T E S. Uh, it's absolute favorite compared to all the other papers. It's uh, much more affordable. If you've ever looked at the pastel paper, very expensive. And uh, of course, being pastel paper, you can easily draw charcoal on there. So I use it for charcoal. That's what I use in my classes. And so now I'm fixing up. I lost the hairline where it's supposed to be. So I'm just making some uh, judgment calls here as to where it's going to be. And that clear gesso mix is really helping that to stick right, to, to grab, it's like a light sandpaper feel to it. So you got a little bit more white up in here, and a little bit more up in there. What I'm trying to do is I don't want to go into, into this area too much. I want to keep this a little bit in shadow right up in here, and I want it to be the darker the, of the hair and then the lighter part of her forehead. So I'm trying to keep from going into this area too much it's a little darker than i need it to be but for right now i'm going to do that and then i'm hoping that this white will go onto it and kind of lighten it for me I got a spot from the splatter of paint right there that I'm kind of struggling to get that out. So I'm using a little bit more of this charcoal to darken it up. And I didn't put more charcoal, I'm just using the residue from this stump to kind of get in there. And blend it in like that. And you get that effect. And then See a little bit more light in this area. And you see how I laid down this base of light? It's like a light gray. Now if I wanna add more lights on top of it, I'm able to do that. If you had gone really bright, like I said not to do in the, few, in the uh, beginning, what would've happened is you, you wouldn't be able to add lights or, uh, or highlights on top of this, right? So basically we're making like one of those gray space aliens everybody thinks they saw, right? We're making a gray person. And then we're adding black to it, and we're adding white to it, darken it, lighten it, whatever. Okay, think of it that way. And then this area, I find that it should be a little bit brighter. 
Now with all that blending, it can cause the paper to clog up on you. But if you use light pressure, it'll help you with that so it doesn't clog up too much. Okay, if you have a problem with pressure, um, I don't know, go to Catholic school and have a, a nun walk around slap you on the hand with a ruler. I don't know what to tell you. Don't press hard. If you follow the grip that I told you, practice it. Every time you go sketch, you do the ring and bell. Even when I use my stump, I'm using that because that grip helps me to control pressure. It'll make your life a heck of a lot easier. Once you start getting good, it doesn't take a long time. My students that complain the, uh, the loudest about it end up being the ones that master it the fastest. Isn't that funny? It's always funny how that works. Some of this white got into the eyebrows, so kind of changed the uh, lines of the eyebrows. So I'm going to go to my dark. I'm just doing that. And voila, it's fixed. And I'm just going to apply some more blending down here into this eye. Try to lighten that up just a tad. You kind of get it a groove when you're drawing. Sometimes I have a hard time getting a groove when I'm teaching because I got to talk and explain this whole thing, but when I'm not teaching it, it, it's easier to get into a groove. Let's do a little bit of this nose over here. And you can see it's it's going pro it's going by pretty uh pretty fast because I'm just doing the shading. And one more thing about shading, it literally takes me no time at all to do the actual drawing of this, okay? Most of the time I can draw a portrait pretty accurately in 10, 15, 20 minutes, maybe more depending on mood and other factors. But the drawing, the actual line drawing can go by pretty fast, especially when you know what you're doing. The shading can take you at least twice as long. So if it took me an hour to do a line drawing, it'll probably take me at least two or, or more hours of the shading, of the, the, the application of the white, the, uh, the, the charcoal, whatever. Okay, all the shading to add the lights and the values of the, the, the lights and darks. So when you're drawing and you're thinking, okay, the drawing part is the most time consuming, it isn't. Whatever time it took you to draw, it's gonna be probably five times longer in actual shading. I say that so it doesn't come as a surprise because people say, you know, it takes me so long to shade when I'm at home running. I'm like, well, that's normal. So I'm just trying to keep you from being surprised about something that is normal. If you're doing it right, it'll take you longer. If it's good, if your shading is faster than you're drawing, then I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm, in my opinion, you're probably doing something wrong. I don't know anybody that could draw really well and they shaded faster than they can draw. Okay, now there is sketching and, and other methods of drawing, but in general, when you're doing something more higher quality, it usually takes a heck of a lot longer to shade it than it did to draw it. So I'm trying to redraw the nose because I lost some of that and it's hard for me to see. My little setup that I got here is okay at best. It's not the uh, best setup, but I'm not a camera guy, so I'm kind of guessing as I go along here. But it's, uh, it isn't too badly lit, but it's not great either. So there's a little bit of a, you got basically a ball for a nose, right? It's a, it's a big round ball with two little balls kind of intersecting it, right, going into it. So that's essentially the, the, what a, a nose is. And so in the center area of the ball is gonna catch more light, and this is center left to us, center right for her. So closer to her right eye, that's where there's a, a little bit of a highlight there. And this highlight across her nose bridge is not super duper bright, so be careful not to go crazy with your light. Remember, always, always less than what you think. A little bit of light there, and then adjacent to that highlight there. And then here's another little thing, because our nose 
uh, just like our ears, is, is made out of this very translucent cartilage, okay? What ends up happening is a lot of times, right in your nostril holes, right, your little booger holes there, it'll end up having this little light area just adjacent to it, right? And you're like, what, what's going on there? This is obviously in shadow. What happens is the light is traveling through the nostrils and bouncing around, and basically it kind of lights up the edge sometimes. So if you see that, don't add white because it's a shadow area. Rather, use your little click eraser. Here's one of the ones I got. And I'm just going to erase out and let some of that gray show through right around the nostril hole. And what that's going to do for you is going to create the illusion of light being translucent on that skin. I'll do my best to move quickly here. So there is some more shading. And again, you see I'm just applying some material. I'm going to use this nice soft brush that really tends to blend well better than the other stiffer brushes. At least on this material. On other materials it blends okay and then the other ones work better. So. Go back to my stump here. Kind of soften that up a little bit. Now your cheek kind of pops out like I said earlier and it starts to recede back into your face right around here. Okay? That's that cheekbone popping out, and then here would be the bottom jaw, okay, that bone that holds the, the mandible, I think it's called, on the knee. So I'm just not going to apply any white in that area. Well, let's see if I can blend this out like so. That way it's catching light and doing this. Now let's go into this nose bridge of the nose here. I'm blending that out in the light area, but I'm not touching the highlight yet. And again, take your time. I'm moving very fast because I'm making a video for you guys, but take your time with this, okay? Be, be smart about it. Don't go crazy trying to move quickly. Okay, never compare yourself to other artists. If you're watching a video and you say, wow, I'm watching so-and-so, maybe you're watching me or somebody else and you know, they got it done in an hour and a half. It takes me 10 hours. Well, if it took you 10 hours, it took you 10 hours. Who cares? So don't start, you know, comparing yourself to others, especially if that person you're comparing yourself to is much better than you. Okay, they've likely just been doing it longer and they know what they're doing. So, you know, don't, don't discourage yourself and, you know, get all down about, oh, man, this guy, he's, he's moving so much faster than me, so I must be doing it wrong. Well, he just knows what he's doing so he can go faster. It's not that he's actually physically moving faster. It's just that he knows or she knows what to do and when to do it almost instantaneously. Because they've done about a million of these. So that, that goes to my point. Practice. Practice, practice, practice. No book, no video, nothing in the world. I don't care what you're looking at videos on YouTube where you bought every book there is on art and drawing or whatever, nothing is going to beat taking out that pencil and doing it yourself. It's as simple as that. Hard work. So there's the nose. I lost some of the highlight so I can go into it and just apply a little bit more highlight. I'm going to put a little dot right there. And the bridge of the nose, a little bit more light in there. I like this opposite side of the highlight. It tends to be a little bit lighter sometimes. I'll add a little bit of more light in there. Add a little bit more interest. Sometimes I'll make things up with the eye just for the hell of it, even if it doesn't really go with the rules of light. Most people don't know any rules of light anyway, so you can pretty much do whatever the heck you want, and nobody's going to know except some physicist in a laboratory somewhere. That side's a little brighter, so that makes sense. And so there we go. We still got 
the other side. Yeah, you can see I've been here for, I don't know how long I've been talking with you guys, 45 minutes, an hour, whatever it is. And you can see I've, I've only done this eye, some of the forehead, and a little bit of the nose, right? Very small amount of work in a large amount of time. So again, back like what I said earlier, you're going to be there a while. Suck it up. Don't start crying about it. Just know that you're going to be like everybody else on Earth, Venus, Mars, possibly Jupiter. You're going to be there a while. So I'm applying a little bit more white now. And you see how this works in layers, guys? You see this? I'm working in layers. I didn't do anything from the get-go as though it was the final thing. Everything I did was preparing for the next step, okay? Preparing for 10 minutes from now. Everything. So never draw thinking, okay, that, that's it. That's the last time I go to that area and touch it. It's exactly that dark. It's exactly that big. That's the wrong way of seeing things. You need to go in here and say, you know what? I think it's that dark. I'm probably going to stay away from that much darkness and go a little lighter because... Because Robert told me to do that. No, because it makes sense. Because you can always darken it. And you can see her ear is just a little bit higher than her eyebrow. Her eyebrow's right there, so I'm going a little bit higher. I can see the line for the ear that I drew earlier. And do that. Do that. There's the shape of the ear. Everybody makes a big deal about ears. And, you know, I, I never really see anybody do a video about ears. I'm sure they're out there. Um, I'm going to do an ear in profile side of it. So people can see the construction of the ear and one looking at you. It's, there's nothing there. And the ears are about as much nothing as you can have on a face. There's just, I've done paintings where I'm painting and I'm doing hair and stuff. And I've actually forgotten to paint in the ear, as stupid as that sounds. Because it just kind of blends in with everything else. You don't really notice it because it's, it's an ear. You know, who stares at people's ears? I'm just drawing the basic light that I see. And there's not a whole lot of information, thank God. Making my life a heck of a lot easier. And I'm going to blend some of this ear up like that. And it's just an illusion, just a few lines here and there. I always say that artists were more like uh, more like magicians, right? We're making little illusions. You're saying, "Wow, look at that! How did he? How did he do that? It's a secret." Shh. Nah, it's not a secret. Just turn on YouTube. There's a million people showing you all kinds of stuff. But it's really not. That difficult. It's an illusion, you know. You do a little white here, a little charcoal there, whatever, and the next thing you know, wow, you got yourself a, a drawing. And everybody thinks you've done this amazing thing. So, there's the ear, okay? You can see I left it kind of that gray space alien kind of color like I was talking about earlier, but it works. And you can see how that gray tone that I talked about in the other video that I applied with the uh, watered-down acrylic helps to give me that middle tone, right? That base that I can work on, like a foundation. And you can already see how it's starting to kind of come to life and there's little gaps here and there I gotta play with, but you get the idea. So how about this? How about we do a little bit of a hair demo? People, they get their butts kicked with hair all the time. Constantly being asked about Hair. Robert, how do you do hair? How do you do hair, Robert? Okay, let's do hair. So I'm going to look at this forehead and I'm trying to determine because I kind of lost some of my lines how big it is. And it turns out the forehead is basically from the nose to chin. So I'm going to go like that. And there's the basic hairline. So I'm just going to kind of do some quick strokes here. So I'm gonna put hair in like so. See how I left open spaces? You can do it that way also. But essentially all I wanna do, okay, is put the average amount of value that I see in the hair. 
the average amount of black or dark gray or, or gray or whatever it is, okay? I'm gonna put the average amount. So let's just take you had an older person, they had gray hair, okay? What you'd wanna do is lay down a foundation of the darkest gray that you see in that photograph, okay? Or if they're posing in front of you, what's the darkest gray you see? Oh, it's towards the backside or whatever other head. Wherever it is and however amount of dark there is, try to imitate that amount of gray or black or dark gray or whatever it is throughout the entire hair like they're wearing a, a helmet, okay, in a weird, bizarre hair shape. Think of it that way. It's like a helmet. And then you follow in there and you just basically, in this case, you've got, it's a black and white picture, but I'm assuming she had black hair, so we're going to go with black because that's what I see in my photograph. So... I'm basically gonna go in there with black. Okay, now I already did the body of this black in a previous video. And then I'm gonna grab my, my big blending tool, which is my chamois that I folded up into fourths here, right? I talked about that earlier. And I'm just gonna kinda do this. You can see how that does that. Gives it a more ghostly image. But really what it's doing is blending all that funky charcoal in there. What you don't want is for this charcoal that I just applied, to sit on the surface. If you just did this and you just applied charcoal and moved on, what ends up happening is all that charcoal is sitting on the surface of the paper. So here, my hand here, sorry about all the burns. That's what happens when you buy a new smoker. Um, <laughs> that was fun, blowing myself up. So here's my hand is the, the paper surface and my left hand is the charcoal. It's just sitting on top. It doesn't take a lot to blow some of that off, smudge it, and just make a huge mess. So what you want to do is, with a brush, or because it's a big area, I'm using my chamois, I go in there and I chamois this in, okay? I always do this. Every time I have students bring in their work into class and they don't do this, my hands come out black because all this crap fell all over me, any papers they had on top of it, everything, it's just a mess, okay? And if it was a nice drawing, it would smudge into the face. I mean, you're just giving yourself a nightmare, okay? So don't do that. So here is, just gotta do a small section for you guys. This would take forever and be a very boring video. So look at how nice and solid black that is. And another reason it's so solid is because I gave it this base, right, that we spray fixed earlier and all that from video one. So it's all, it's already dark. So going over, it doesn't take a lot of effort to make it even darker, right? It's a lot easier. So now that I got the base as dark as I feel it needs to be, I'm now gonna do what I call cutting in, okay? Uh, another term is subtractive drawing. So here's my little clicky eraser, okay? Subtractive drawing, just as the title implies, you're subtracting, you're taking material off, okay? So I'm gonna go where the highlights are Okay, you're not trying to make the exact same shape or anything, just, you know, guess. And I'm going to do little strokes like so, okay? Already, you see that it looks like the highlights of hair, right? It doesn't take a lot of effort. If you don't have a clunky eraser, you could do it with a kneaded eraser. The only problem with doing it with this is that because it's a kneaded eraser, it's very soft, you'll lose your little tip, right? You can make it into a little point like that, or for hair or big areas, I'd rather... You do a nice edge like that, like a nice sharp edge, and then you can do this. But you can't apply too much pressure with it because then it starts to lose its shape and then you gotta constantly be, you know, fixing it. So what I do is I use my little click eraser mostly to erase little areas around, small areas around the eyes, and to do hair. That's what I love this eraser for. This is the best thing. And General's uh, brand makes of the, the same people that make the uh, charcoal pencils, they make these. So, you know, look for that. And you can see how I just did a few strokes. Notice there's space in between some of my strokes, okay? So keep that in mind, add little spaces, because that way the dark of the hair shows through and it looks like individual pieces of hair. Okay, so I'm not gonna do the whole thing, I'm just gonna do this little area. And then you say, hey, you know what? That's great, but it's not bright enough. If you feel that the hair, or excuse me, the highlights in there, need to be brighter, that's fine, but just remember the following. If it's a younger person, this is a, a pretty young girl, she doesn't have white hair, she doesn't have gray hair. So in that case, be careful not to overuse 
uh, the white because you can start putting in so much white that you'll age her by 40, 50 years, okay? She'll start looking like your grandmother because you put so much white, okay? When it's a younger person, think of an infant, a small kid, a young person, somebody that doesn't have gray hair, you're gonna use a lot less. So I'm gonna go into the brightest part of her hair, okay? Oh, excuse me, the brightest part of her highlights, which in her, it's right in this area. And I'm just gonna apply some of that white it's kind of like there's a bright spot right in here where my pencil is like this and right around here. So above it, there's some erasing and below it is a little bit of erasing also. Could you go straight into this without the erasing and straight into the white? Sure, you could, you could do that. But it'll mingle with your charcoal that you just laid down and what will end up happening is you'll end up making more mud. Okay, you'll get a lot more grays. Okay, which could help you, but I'd rather erase out so it's kind of a cleaner surface and then I apply this white and it makes the, the white even brighter because you erased out some of that charcoal. And so that's just a little bit of white there. Like so. And you see it's very simple, it's just, I'm just doing that but I'm keeping them small. Look at how tiny they are in comparison to the rest of the hair. There's not a lot there. I'm gonna grab my big brush. And do this. And so it'll grab some of that loose white and kind of choke it out, it makes it look faded. Look how easy that is, isn't that great? You're sitting at home going, man, this thing's kicking my butt. And then look at that. Minutes, minutes with me running at the mouth. Okay, you know how fast that is when I'm not running at the mouth? I'm Cuban, so I tend to run at the mouth just by, uh, by nature, but you know how that is. Look at that. Simple, simple, simple. Just a few strokes, and it looks like highlights on a young girl with black hair. That's what I have in my picture. Makes sense. If it was an older person, and there was a lot more white hair or gray hair, and I'll do some demos. I'm going to start doing demos like this, but I want to do like a guy with a big beard so you can see what that looks like, uh, an older woman, small kids. I'm going to have a whole variety of videos. I'm going to take all the years of, of teaching uh, how to do all this stuff and, and try to at my best to answer the most commonly asked questions that I get year in and year out, that I get all the time by the vast majority, if not all of my students. I'm gonna make videos to address all those questions. Which of course means I probably won't have any students. <laughs> that would suck. But it's fun. It's fun to teach, it's fun to give back to people and, and do what you can for your community and, and for others because we're only here for a short time, my friends. So make it count. There's a bit of a highlight now as I'm getting more comfortable. I got more of the darks in. I got a little bit of the mids and more lights. It's, time, it's starting to take shape. And as it slowly takes shape, I can see now that there's more of a highlight right here in the forehead area. So I did it smaller than what I believe it to be. I always go smaller with my highlights. Why? Because I can blend them out. And if I need to, I can always brighten them up and make them larger. So I do it smaller. You see how it's growing because I'm blending it out? So it's just a safer way of working that's gonna give you a heck of a lot less problems. Look at that. And it just added that little bit of light right up in the hairline, right where it meets the hairline up there. It just became slightly brighter. I lost some of that, so let's go in there and do a little bit more. And it's all about layering like that. Isn't that fun? What I love about charcoal drawing is that now since it's not like the old days where there's those black sticks in your hand, now it's pencils, man. Look at that. Isn't that great? Relatively clean hands, right? Not a mess. Very small amount of supplies. Uh, and just a, a quick little setup. This is my masonite board that I cut for my students to make a uh, drawing board um, and some clips and, and, you're, and you're ready to rock. You know, it doesn't take a lot, you know. I oil paint and do other things, but 
I will tell you that, first of all, drawing, not just because I'm showing you a drawing video, but drawing is the foundation for everything else. You need to draw, okay? Everybody wants to just trace things or, you know, whatever. You need to know how to do this because this is teaching you as you're struggling across the paper all about values. You may not learn the terminology. You may not understand why th this is. You just do it because you understand that it's lifed out on your paper uh, or on your, uh, your photograph. When you draw, you're resolving tons of issues, okay? Tons of issues. And mentally, you prepare yourself to pick up color later on. My suggestion to you would be get into pastel after this because a lot of it, uh, what I'm doing here, is the exact same thing I do in pastels technique wise okay and I'll probably do some pastel and maybe even some oil painting videos I've been getting requests from my students and uh, just like a lot of people on YouTube I'm finding out that the upload time of videos are just a nightmare uh, like one of my first videos took like the entire night and I'm new to videos and all this I didn't realize what I was getting into and I could not believe uh, the amount of time that it would take to not just to make this stuff forget all that just to upload it it's crazy you know all the technology we got what's that old saying we can put somebody on the moon and we can't make this damn thing go faster right it's true we did put somebody on the moon and this thing is taking forever to upload but I discovered some new ways of uploading and some cool apps that you can use that have made the uh, the process faster so now i'm making this and it should be able to upload much much quicker than before and again this this paper uh excuse me this pencil that i'm using the hb hard it's dark enough for what i'm doing because it already has that base from what we spray fixed earlier okay from uh, the previous video so there's not, I don't need to work so hard at it. But let's just say it wasn't as dark as you wanted it to be. I would then move up to the next step, which is a medium. And here's a medium. And it's a lot darker. Okay? Now, I wouldn't go with the medium right away. Because some of you lazier types, you'll just grab that medium right away. It's because it's, this is just too dark. And what happens is it might be uh, just messier than it needed to be. So I find that going into the HB Hard first... Right? Again, back to, let's do it the safest way. I go my soft, excuse me, my, um, my HB hard. Oh, didn't work out. It's too uh, light. I need it to be darker. Okay, then at that point, I grab my medium. And if for some reason, and I can't imagine why, but if for some reason it's still not dark enough, then I can go over to a soft or a very soft, right? Extra soft, I think it's called. But that's a rare thing. I, I don't use those that much. And look how dark I'm getting already. I don't need all that other stuff. Unfortunately, I got kind of a line from the previous drawing when I was working a little too fast in the first video. I'm looking for my brush. So I'm gonna brush off this edge here. I kind of like it a little bit as a, a soft edge. I'll talk about that in another video, okay? Soft edge basically just means that it's it's furry, soft. You know, hard edge would be like very delineated line, like for example the uh, the jawline here up against that dark background. It's got very light skin, so it gets a dark background. <clears throat> An edge up against a dark background that is well lit will look much harder. Okay, much sharper, I should say. And that's what's called a hard edge. A soft edge is something like, I don't know if you can tell, but over here, like for example, this edge. You still see an edge, but it's not like a hard delineated line. It's softer, it's faded, like a, like a hairy back on a butterfly or something like that, or a caterpillar or whatever. It's soft. And then a lost edge is, is literally, it's lost. You don't see where, let's just use this example, you don't see where the... the jaw ends and the hair begins it's just black hair coming into the face is is just as dark as the, as a hair and so you don't see the edge of the jaw that's a lost edge you don't see it, it's lost and i may do that on this one just 
Maybe I'll make a whole video on using this exact drawing where we'll talk about edges and I'll, I'll change this from the original photo and use the uh, values that will help me make a soft edge and a, a lost edge and all of that. And hopefully that will work out better. Okay, so I hope this video taught you a little bit more about shading and how to use the tools and I'll hold them up real quick. So again, here's my stump. I think it's a number six, doesn't matter. They're fatter and longer and thinner than this. Doesn't matter, I like this size, but whatever. And I like this brush on this paper, but you know, any brush will work. As long as it's not too hard or too soft, right? So you can see that when I put it up on the cheek here, see how there's a give there, right? So it's, it's not stiff, but it's not too soft. And of course, my General's uh, HB Hard pencil, and as you can see, it's sharpened to a spear. And then my chamois, as you can see, it's gotten worn out. And of course, my handy dandy kneaded eraser. And the other thing I used was my clicky eraser here, and of course, the white charcoal. And so here's my clicky eraser. Love that. And here's my other one. This one's just smaller. You don't need both, you can just get one. I, personally, I like this one because it gives me, when I sharpen it, thin lines or bigger uh, erasing. But in a nutshell, that's that's erasing. I mean, that's shading. And we even did a little hair demo. I talked a little bit about the lips and nose and quite a bit about the eye and the ear a little bit and how the structure of the skull is. And that everything I just told you about the skull and where the highlights tend to be the brightest, that's, that's everybody, man, woman, black, white, pink with purple polka dots, that's, that's everybody on earth, okay? That's pretty much everyone on earth because that's just the way the human skull is built. Now the intensity of that light and the, the, the amount that will be on an individual's face, that's all based on genetics and, and how you're built, okay? But essentially, those areas I pointed out earlier are gonna be found throughout everyone's face all the time unless they have uh, a different weird situation with their uh, the light. And remember when you're gonna do the highlights on the hair, less is more, okay? Less is more. You don't wanna go crazy applying a bunch of white and then just, just end up looking like she's 90 rather than 19, all right? So uh, please hit like, remember to subscribe, it helped me out for you old geezers out there, some of my buddies and my uh, my students out there that are uh, scared of computers and, and all of that. I got phone calls and emails about that, okay? No offense, uh, but just, you know, don't be scared. You can hit subscribe. Nothing's going to happen. Your house is not going to blow up or anything. You know, start a little YouTube account so you can follow me and you'll be able to comment. And if you got any questions, any requests, you know, hey, I don't know how to do whatever. You know, you got a question on something I didn't cover. Uh, you didn't understand, you can post it right there on my website, excuse me, not my website, on my channel, and um, and ask away, or if you want to see a demo on a particular subject, you can just ask in the little comment box there, and just let me know, hey, you know, what about, uh, somebody already asked me about oil paint, uh, through an email and sent me, okay, so a lot of work goes into this, so, you know, little by little, I'll make time to uh, hopefully answer every question I get. All right, so God bless, be safe, uh, keep your distance from everybody, and, uh, and practice, practice, practice.